For connectivity and exporting images, there are a number of ways you can export to a USB or send to a DICOM network. Not are all friendly. So I'm going to address exporting an entire patient file to USB or network because earlier we did discuss how to, if I flip through here and go to previous images, I can you know save single images at a time by coming over here and clicking the menu button as we showed in an earlier movie. I'll get that up there. And then there's some other ways too, but they're not very efficient and they're not always, and they don't always work well. So the first thing we'll do here is go to the patient screen. And up here in the left hand corner, we have some choices. This is going to show the active images for this patient, image history for that patient. I don't have a history, so this is all we'll see. And then we want to try data transfer. Um, first, there's a batch quick save here. This does allow you to save images to a USB stick. However, it's not always very helpful. I found that sometimes it exports the cine loops and the images just fine, but other times the JPEG images did not come across. So you may try that a few times. It's a very easy way to transfer images in JPEG or a movie format. However, I didn't find it to be always very helpful. It, it kind of, it didn't transfer images. Some of the JPEGs were corrupt. So uh, I wouldn't trust it, in other words. So let's do this just to make sure. We'll click up here to data transfer. Okay, it's saying I have unsaved da exam data. I'm going to go ahead and store all. And I'm going to choose MPEG view. MPEG view allows me to view this on a PC. It will actually install software onto your PC that allows you to view all the images and the cine loops in a web browser and it's quite handy and you can export them to JPEG or some other format from there. Right now let's show you how to do it to a USB so you can do that. So I've chosen MPEG view and down here it's very important and this is what's kind of confusing. It will usually go to no archive and it will not let you export. I'm going to choose this USB drive. I just stuck it in there and I didn't notice it immediately. Here are previous exams I've taken and here's the current exam. So I can choose this I'm going to go ahead and hit transfer. It's going to show my progress along there. And when I pull that out and bring it onto a PC, there will be instructions saying start here and it may ask you to update the software. So we see right here, it's all been copied to USB and we're ready to go. You can simply remove the USB. Right here it shows you that there's one connected. These are some icons showing you various things. I'm going to go ahead, take it out, and notice that the USB disappeared. Now I'll go ahead and exit from there. Next we'll get into DICOM transfer. This is a little more complicated and I usually avoid addressing this situation because every network is different and there's no way uh, somebody remotely such as myself if you call for support there's nothing we can do because it all depends on your network and what's going on on the other end of a server. So I will show you where to go and some of the important things of note and where the biggest hiccups are when exporting to a network or DICOM server. So as we showed before, how we'd export is we'd go to the data transfer. And here we would choose export. And this is what's for the DICOM export. If I plug in a USB stick, and I click that export, I would be able to view these on a PC. However, they would all be in DICOM format. So it's not a PC readable format unless you have a DICOM reader. And there are free DICOM readers out there for you to use. And if that's easier, I do recommend doing that rather than AVI and JPEG. But if we want to transfer to a network, first we must connect to the network. Right now, you'll see here I have a DICOM image storage. You may or may not have this here, but even if you do, it's probably set up for somebody who had the machine previously. You want to make sure that you have this set up correctly. So in order to do that, we're going to click exit here, get out of this screen, and we'll go to this utility menu. The first thing you do is go up here to connectivity, and this is the menu you'll be using. 
We start with TCP IP. We entered a computer name here and you can put whatever you want. I am connected to my own network here with a just a standard Cat5 cable and that's what you'd find in any network typically and you just plug it back into the machine. This is where you would need to speak to your IT professional. If you don't have one, you'll want to make sure you have someone who knows the network and how to get it connected because if you're sending it outside of your office, there are plenty of things that could be involved in preventing you from imaging, from sending images outside of your office to a network. But if you're on a standard network and they say go ahead and use D DHCP, this is what the IT person would tell you, just leave this box checked. Otherwise, they'll give you information. If you uncheck it, you can enter that here, your IP address, subnet mask, and default gateway. That will immediately connect you to your network, assuming that they gave you the right information. Next thing we need to do is set up a device. What I did is I added a device that is my computer on the network. I found that my IP address, in it, which I got from a DICOM software, uh, it tells me the IP address of that server by going into that DICOM software. So in order to get the information you need and where to send your DICOM images, you have to receive an IP address from the administrator on the people who hold the DICOM server. So in order to add it, you would just simply click Add, and it would give you this name, name the device, you know, you could say DICOM Indy for Indianapolis, saying that that was your DICOM server in Indianapolis, and they would give you an IP address that you would plug in there. Since I don't have an IP address, I can check this device by clicking ping. First it says, do I want to save changes? I want to say yes. Unfortunately, it wants me to, I have to shut down the software in order to save those changes, but don't worry, I can do it without doing that and I pinged it and it's got a frown face. It's because I don't have an IP address, it's not going anywhere. On this, on my own DICOM server, I can go ahead, click ping, and I've got a smiley face. This simply means that it was able to communicate with the DICOM server. It basically sent a message saying, are you there? It said, yes, I'm there. And you get a nice little happy face saying everything's okay. So that's the first step, but that does not necessarily mean you'll be able to transfer images and that's important to note. I get a lot of calls saying they get the smiley face, but images can't go across. So let's talk about the next item, the service. What I did here, I chose my device up top, which was my DICOM server. See, I have the DICOM Indy there, my own server here. So I'll click that, and I can choose image storage, print, query retrieve, storage commitment, work list, any of these, or just simple network storage. And then I would click Add. So I'm going to say network storage. I would click Add and this would give you a name for it and it would be sending the de device is already connected and this is just saying when I transfer images this is where it's going to go so I'm gonna just put this as number two and then here we'll go across allow multi-frame allows you to save cine loops across the network if you have it checked and you have a lot of cine loops it will uh, clog up the network and take a little bit of time to transfer raw data allows you to import it into another system and make adjustments I typically wouldn't allow any compression. I would leave it as lossless, especially in a DICOM, and structured reporting. These are more things that your IT person may want. Now, another very, very important thing here is when we enter this, you must have an AE title for the machine and a port number. Most DICOM servers insist on a proper AE title. You must type this in exactly as they've given it to you. So if I had an AE title, if I was given an AE title here of Logic E, and, I, and they had it capitalized and I had it lowercase, when I click verify, it's going to give me a frowny face. It's going to tell me uh, I didn't communicate with the server. It may have, you may still get the smiley face, but then when you try and transfer images, it will choke and you won't be able to transfer the images. It'll just stay there and saying it's still queued. Next most important thing is this port number here. They have to give you a port number and it has to be the correct port number or again, it's just going, the DICOM server will not accept your images. So you must make sure you get those. You'll need to speak to your IT professional and the person in charge of the DICOM network in order to A, get your machine on your own network and then to transfer it to a DICOM server on site or off site, you need this information there. So you need to talk to two different people to do it. So here I'll go ahead and click verify. And boom, I've got my smiley face. 
Theoretically, this should allow me to send images across the network. There's one last thing that would prevent you from sending images across the network, and that's what's called a firewall. You may have it internally, externally. I've seen it on both sides where you will get all this verify and smiley faces, but you will not be able to send images. It will just sit there and say that there was some sort of failure. That usually means there's a firewall involved or your AE title may be incorrect. So just make sure you want to check those, check with your IT person on both sides, the DICOM server and in your office to find out if there may be a firewall involved in this way and you need to allow this ultrasound machine to send images. So once you've done all that, you can choose a button here. And here we can assign print 1, print 2, and print 3. And these print 4 and print 5 can be user defined up here. So I've got P1 to save as a DICOM image to the hard drive. Print 2 I can send in a different format and then here you'll see that I have this DICOM image storage. So I can choose for it to save for USB quick save, HD export, so I can USB quick save means I can plug in my USB, hit print and it'll go directly to the USB. For my DICOM image storage I would click here and you'll see this DICOM ND down here but I did not set up a device for that or service for that so it's not going to allow me to select it. But I do have a service, this DICOM image storage here. So then we would click save, save the changes, and exit. If you want to add DICOM print or DICOM storage commitment or any of those services, you would follow those exact same steps each time. So let's show how to send it to the DICOM network. We'll click, click the patient, and we did go through this briefly data transfer I'm gonna go ahead and choose export over here on the left hand side choose a patient to transfer uh, let me first select the location I'm gonna choose this DICOM image storage see this DICOM image storage 2 appeared so I can click DICOM image storage this is saying it's gonna to go to my DICOM server that I have set up and choose this smaller file of 2 megabytes I'll go ahead and click transfer. So there, it shows that it just transferred over the network and the status is OK. Now, I have a spooler up here. This little button says spooler. It shows my DICOM spooler. I can click on that and it's going to show everything that I did. Right now, it's saying that there's no error and that it went across the network just fine. So I can hide this. I can choose to resend some images to see if they didn't go through. I'm going to go ahead and you can delete that as well. If you delete this, it, it's just deleting this from the spooler. You're not deleting the exam. So I'm going to go ahead and hit hide and I'm back to my imaging screen.